I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break the hearts of stone, give them heart for love alone. I will speak my word to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Patricia died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. Let us pray. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we humbly entrust our sister Patricia. In this life, you embrace her with your tender love. Deliver her now from every evil and bid her eternal rest. The old order has passed away Welcome her now into paradise, where there will be no more sorrow, no more weeping, or no pain, but fullness of peace and joy with your Son and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Kindly be seated. Now we shall have the eulogy. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming today. As I look around, I can see a lot of people who have made an enormous effort to be here. Mum would have been very touched. The reason I'm up here today is because I asked Mum about 10 years ago who she would like to do her eulogy. I wasn't intending to be morbid. Mum always had ideas about how she'd like things done and I wanted to get it right. 
She said to me, you should do it. I was horrified. She went on to say, you would do a good job. Why should it always be the men who do these jobs? That's not to say the boys shouldn't do it, but I think you'd be great. So here I am, and now I have to do a good job. <laughs> and if not, plan B, Peter is here. She also said to me a few years ago, after returning from a funeral, for heaven's sake, just don't make me out to be a saint. So we'll be sure to throw a few wooden spoon stories in as well. Kathleen Patricia was born on the 21st of January, 1940, the first child to Charles and Noni Shanahan, followed shortly thereafter by Kevin and Margaret, who are both here today, and Michael, who sadly passed away a few years ago. Mum would speak fondly about my grandmother, who we called Nana Shan. She was a loving mother who held the family together and a tireless worker. The same things can't be said about my grandfather, who was a cause of much sadness in Mum's childhood. Mum was born in Sydney and her family moved around quite a bit in those early years. She lived in Narrenburn for a time, then Woolloomooloo and Riverwood. Mum's family was living in Woolloomooloo at the time of her secondary schooling, where she attended St Mary's Cathedral School in the city. Mum was an excellent student and excelled at most subjects. She had wanted to continue her studies after the leaving certificate, but by this time, Nana Sham was a single mother supporting four children, and it was decided it was best for Mum to finish school, get a job, and help support the family. Mum did a bit of modelling work, but decided that that industry wasn't for her. She then worked at Rennie's, which was an advertising agency in the city, and following that, she worked at a company that fitted out RSLs and clubs with restaurants. Her favourite job, though, was with Total, which was a French oil company. Mum was fluent in French, and in her role as a private secretary to the managing director, she was responsible for translating all the correspondence between France and Australia and back again. It was when Mum was working at Rennie's that she met Dad. He remembers it well. Dad was working in a pharmacy in Elizabeth Street in the city. The dispensary had a small peephole window that the pharmacists could look out of to see if there were any customers in the shop. Dad's boss said to him one day, here comes Shani. So he went to look out the small peephole window and his, in his words, here was this beautiful, petite, young blonde, five foot two with eyes of blue. Never did I believe I would end up with someone so beautiful. Georgia would say, you are punching, Dad. At this stage, Dad's boss was pursuing Mum, but Mum didn't show any interest in him. Fast forward three years and Dad's former boss, as he was now, had married someone else and called Dad out of the blue to see if he wanted to go on a blind date with Shani. Of course, he jumped at the chance and the four of them went on a date to play squash. Dad said Mum wasn't a bad player, but he let her win. I'm not sure about that. Anyway, Dad said the best thing going for him was that Nana Shan liked him. She thought he looked like Gregory Peck. Mum would later tell Dad that she liked him because he had broad shoulders, he was a good provider, and he adored her. Dad remembers when they were just going out, she would work for free in his pharmacy at Crow's Nest on Saturday mornings. Ever the opportunist, he just couldn't let this one go. Mum and Dad were married on the 31st of July, 1965, at St James Cathedral in the city. In 1968, a year after Stephen was born, they moved up here when Dad bought the pharmacy at Edelon. As a mother, my mum was amazing. Stephen, Libby, Peter and I had an incredibly happy childhood and mum was involved in everything we did. Our house was full of kids. Mum was always feeding people and speeding around town in the white Mazda. There were two signs stuck to our fridge. One said, a tidy home is the sign of a wasted mind. And mum lived by that mantra. Mum had an office at home and when it became so full of stuff that she physically couldn't get in there anymore, she moved her typewriter onto the kitchen table and she sat up there. From, it, from there, the office work, the parish work, the folk group music, the PNF work, it all migrated to the kitchen bench. I think you would describe it as organised chaos. Mum was also prepared for Armageddon. 
Our pantry and fridges were always stocked to overflowing, a lot of the contents out of date. Mum hated to throw things out. She took great pride when you asked her if she had some obscure item you needed for a school project. Usually, she would find whatever you needed amongst her great stash of supplies, and then she would smile and say, that's why you just don't throw things out willy-nilly. Mum loved ordering from her Avon catalogue. It wasn't enough that she had a whole pharmacy at her disposal. We think she liked it when Gary turned up at the door and they'd have a good old chat. Poor Gary, though, he used to hate it when he'd turn up and Dad was home. And Dad would go off his head and tell Gary that Mum didn't need another face cleanser. <laughs> Mum was always busy. She was a founding member of Quota, which was just like Rotary but for women. Mum loved hosting many of the fundraising events at our home. She, of course, did all the bookwork and the wages, etc., for Dad's pharmacies and was a parish secretary here at St John the Baptist for about 20 years, a job she did voluntarily. She ran a group called the Folk Group, which provided the mass and singing for mass each, the music and singing for mass, mass each Sunday. She loved being part of the school community and was a PNF president for a number of years and also ran the school building fund. Peter was quite the delinquent child and Sister Joan soon learned to call the presbytery and not the house because that's where she would find mum. Mum would tell Sister Joan, I'm just too busy to come and get Peter today. You'll have to put him in a taxi and send him here. It's hard to believe you would put a seven-year-old in a taxi, isn't it? <laughs> mum loved music. She was always singing, which we found really annoying most of the time, but she was actually a good singer. She was asked many years ago to host a radio program for the local community radio station, 5 Plus, in Gosford. It was a volunteer position, but she took it on very seriously. Most of the program was dedicated to classical music, and she would talk about the composer and the origins of the music, and then she would have a half-hour slot that she called her Celtic Corner, where she would play her favourite Irish music. Listeners would often call in, but one in particular became a bit of a pest. The ladies on the phone would often come in to mum and say, Pat, someone called Gregory Peck has called in. He thinks you're wonderful and you have a lovely voice. Mum would reply, that's just my bloody husband, take no notice of him. <laughs> As anyone who knew mum knows, mum loved to read. Mum and dad's house is full of books, lots of first editions and collector series. She would read the Sydney Morning Herald, The Australian and The Telegraph pretty much cover to cover every day. She loved current affairs and always had an opinion on, any, on, on everything. If I was unsure where I stood on a particular issue, I would call mum. In fact, I was remembering this morning, one of my friends would ring me and she would say, what does your mum think about such and such? So she had a bit of a reputation for that. Often though, you couldn't get off the phone to her. She had so much knowledge in her head, it was unbelievable. If my kids ever asked me an obscure question, that would be you, Georgia, and I didn't know the answer, I would just tell them to call Shani. Mum always had dictionaries at hand and was constantly looking things up. She had no interest in the internet, which is a shame in some ways, as she would have loved searching things up, but we all shudder to think what would have happened with mum and internet shopping and the damage she could have done there. Before I hand over to Pete, I'd like to acknowledge the wonderful care mum received at Gosford Hospital over her many visits there this year. One doctor in particular said to me that she thought the reason mum had lived so long despite her poor health was because of the care dad provided for her. He made sure she ate nourishing food and he was of course all over the medications she needed. Despite her sad childhood, and the unimaginable sorrow when we lost Libby. Mum would have said she had a good life. We know now that she is giving Libby a big cuddle in heaven. As a dear friend wrote to me during the week, a mother is with us always, first in her lifetime, then forever in our memory. Obviously, this is a, a very sad day, but sorry. <clears throat> but mum with the Irish heritage once said to Caroline, make sure to celebrate my life and don't be so sad about everything, which 
we quite found easy to do as we sat down to come up with ideas about mum. All we had were funny stories. Mum was just, she was such a character. So in that vein, I do have a few memorable anecdotes that I would like to share because, well, mum would have wanted it that way. And despite Caroline referring to me as the delinquent child, um, I never saw myself that way with mum. I thought just quietly that I was the favourite, being the baby, and that all the things she did were really out of um, acts of love. Like being sent home in a taxi, for example, I thought was just great. Being seven and eight years old and I was just got a rousing from the principal. I was sitting in the office and the teacher would come in and say, Peter, your taxi is waiting. I was like, yeah, it is. Thanks, Mum. <laughs> and it was always the same driver. Mum would request it was Bill, who was a friend of mine's father, and he was so nice to me, let me sit in the front and drove me to the presbytery here where Mum was working feverishly for the parish. It was at Woi Woi. And Father Mum would look after me. There was a poker machine, let me play it and keep all the coins I made. Instead of going to school, I thought it was great. But in hindsight, I know they were just being nice to me because they knew mum was going to give me a walloping when I got home, and that's certainly what she did. Mum was the disciplinarian at, at home. I mean, dad was a staple, but um, he never raised his hand to us. It was mum, and she would raise whatever she could find, her hand, the leather strap, and her favourite was the wooden spoon, and she carried it around in a handbag, and she wasn't afraid to use it. If we're at Fleming's at Edelong or um, Everglades at dinner, even at church, if we misbehaved, whack, whack, whack. She broke it on Libby, or Stephen said it was on me, but she'd still come after us with a broken wooden spoon. But she never failed to provide for us, and she always made sure we had everything we needed, even if that meant chasing down the school bus to deliver our lunch. I didn't know what happened. The bus kind of came to a sudden stop, and I was just talking to my friend Dean, and then in thumped mum, you know, bus full of school kids, dressing gown, slippers, hair, everything. I was mortified. She was calling my name, Peter. So I oh, kept my head down. She came straight up to me and gave me my lunch, and the bus went silent. Nobody said anything. It was just respect, and that's what she was like. And this is why, long before they called them tiger mums. I think mum pioneered the whole uh, tiger mum movement. If we're ever in trouble with somebody at school, mum would be straight to the principal's office, giving them what for. It was so prolific, we had to stop telling our stories to mum. So we'd come home from school, mum would say, how was your day? It was fine, mum. It was fine. No trouble. But one time when I was um, 18, I forgot about that, and I used to drive mum's car everywhere. And she used to fill it up with petrol, make sure the Rego was up to date and made sure it was serviced. And I told her I was going to the city once, so she uh, got new tyres on it. So it was great. I walked to the tyre place and I uh, drove down to the city on the freeway. The tyre blew out and I pulled over and called her and I said, Mum, new tyres just exploded. And she was upset. And she said, that's it. I'm calling those guys. I'm going to go around there and sort them out. Oh, Mum, don't do that, please. It's OK. It's no problem. But she did. I said, OK, Mum, do what you got to do. And she was always really... I'd say, cunning. So I have this story, I was debating whether to tell it or not, but um, this happened when I was trying to go for my um, P's. And mum was uh, never say no to a driving test. She'd always let us, or take us out for a drive. I think she knew I wasn't that good, so when I was going for my exam, I was out getting my, doing my practical, and mum was back, and I would like to say she was cooking up this mad scam. So I pulled left onto Blackwell Road and almost hit the telegraph pole and the instructor had to grab the wheel to straighten it up. So I knew I'd failed straight away and he gave me this head shake. And so I finished the test and went back to the RTA and when I got back there, there was an ambulance out the front. So I didn't know what was going on. I walked inside and there was mum. She was on her back and she had the her arm over her forehead and she had the oxygen mask on. So I ran to her and I'm like, mum, are you okay? So she pushed me aside and pulled the mask down, looked at the instructor. And she was, did you pass? I said, mum. But then I oh, wait a minute, did I? And then the instructor, clearly I'd failed, under immense pressure, and he looked at his thing, looked at mum, and he goes, you passed? Thank you. <laughs> and I was like, I was going to say, mum, that's enough, but she carried on with it. She's such an artist. And I took her in the ambulance and went to the Gosford Hospital. So I just got my P's. So I uh, hurried up the paperwork, and I drove to pick her up, and remarkably, she's nothing wrong with her. So I checked her out immediately, and honestly, she sat in the front seat, put her sunglasses on, gave me a little giggle, and we just giggled all the way home, and I thought, mum... <laughs> I never told that because I wasn't sure what the repercussions would be, but I like to think she did that for me. And as Caroline said, mum was just, she was just so smart, knew everything, and um, if friends would come over, she would have, you know, a quiz show on like Sale of the Century. She knew all the answers. My friends were convinced it was a recording. Even the 60-second countdown, she knew it. We tried to get her to go on, but she would never go on. Even as adults, as Caroline mentioned, she would always go to her and ask. And when our kids asked, asked questions, just go and ask Shani. Next time we're up there, sit down for 30 minutes, and that's what you needed. If you ask mum something, prepare for a, a lecture. And she was witty, too, very funny. Um, always had these drop-of-the-hat remarks to say. Fraser commented that it was funny we had a road called Bogan Road up here, and 
Mum said straight away, it was Bogan Road long before the Bogans arrived here. <laughs> and she knew she nailed it. She thought it was so funny. But we weren't enough for Mum's intellect and um, she needed something more. So she made it all the way to the golden microphone of John Laws and she was a regular on the airwaves. And, and John knew Mum. Hi, Pat, how are you? She was so popular on that show that the, uh, the switchboard started to block her and not let her on anymore. So she used to call in with pseudonyms just so she'd get some airtime. Newspapers, front to back, as Caroline said, she would read them. And so versed in current affairs, she'd like to write in opinion pieces that would feature in the comments section. And that was much to Dad's demise. He would hate it because customers would come in and challenge Dad on Mum's viewpoints. You know what your wife has said? So he asked Mum if she could start using her maiden name from now on. And Dad knew he couldn't win an argument with Mum. And as Dad said, words come out of your mother's mouth like bullets from a machine gun. <laughs> And hurtful words too, he said, so he never challenged her. And we never argued either. We know we couldn't get by mum. I mean, we never wanted to go to boarding school for 11 or 12 or learn classical guitar, but mum said that's how it was and that's how it was. She was very no-nonsense like that and she was, always knew what to do no matter what the situation. Didn't like complaining, um, didn't like whinging. So my friends and I, we were, tried to ride our skateboards on the rip bridge under the arches as a half pipe and one of my friends, Nathan, fell over the side. And on his way down, he, um, he tried to grab on and cut his arm on this oyster. And it was elbow to wrist, gash, open right up. It was awful. Um, he thought maybe we'd get a helicopter or something. And I said, no, no mum will know what to do. Just we'll go home to mum. So he hightailed it back home. And she knew, all right, uh, mum's solution to this life-threatening problem was the kitchen sink, hot water, and a bottle of dead oil. And it was steaming. And Nathan said, this isn't right. Stop your whinging, she said, and submerged his arm into this lava. And he, after he came to, he survived. And I like to think that... He's alive because of mum's quick thinking. Yeah, she was a, a strong woman, mum. And if, those of you that know Caroline and Libby know that it's shown off on them too. So growing up in a, a household of all this assertive, uh, assertiveness, there was never a dull moment. So one of the funniest stories we have of mum is the, um, the famous pork chop incident. It gets told all the time and mum loves it. So it's been embellished somewhat. We all have different versions of it, but this is my one. So we're around the kitchen bench at night waiting for dinner and mum had played it up this roast, and we're having a good time, and Dad gets up and asks, what's for dinner? And Mum said, oh, pork. And Dad had a hard week, ugh, pork, I hate pork. And Mum's reaction was swift, and it was a plate to the head, threw it at him. And Dad ducked and had a quick look at Mum, had a bit of a stare down, and Dad realised she had five more to go, so he made a run for it, and here's Mum throwing these plates at him. So on the fridge, you know, there was smashed porcelain and gravy, pork, and, and we just, even though we love Dad and he's the staple, we just thought, go Mum, you know, that's just what she was like, so tough. Even, even physically, I mean, she slammed her thumb in the car door once and it filled with blood. And Dad said, you've got to fix that with a drill. So she said, okay. So he thumbed down and Dad drilled in to release the blood and solved it. It couldn't have been six months later when Dad jammed his thumb in the workshop door. Mum said, I know that solution. Oh, no, you're not coming near my thumb. Tough, <laughs> tougher than Dad she was. <laughs> you know, but despite, despite all that toughness, Mum was... Um, she... Uh, uh, she was very warm, loving, and she had a real tender side to her. And she always found ways and opportunities to let us know how she felt about us. And one of the, the most recent one was so lovely. It was at Christmas and we were around the, the dining room table and mum always liked one of us to say a prayer, so we said a prayer. And before we started eating, she said, stop. I'd like, to, like you all to know the meaning of the word husband. And she went into this poem in a little ad lib speech just to let us know how much dad meant to her and how much the family meant. And it were really beautiful, adoring words that we were wondering who she was talking about. And then we figured, I think it's Dad, which we thought was funny because we weren't sure she even liked him at times. But, <laughs> but there she was, really making sure, just let us know how much she loved your dad and how much the marriage meant to the family. So it is hard to sum up the essence of mum in such a short amount of time, which made it really challenging to try and find a funeral-appropriate quote for mum. But mum didn't like all the fanfare, and I know after talking with the family, exactly what she wanted to go out on. And it was the other quote that mum had hanging in the kitchen. It was a plaque and uh, it was in mock Latin and it said, nil bastard carborundum. And mum loved it, it was in Latin because people would say, what does that mean? And she'd always whip around and she'd look him in the eye, put a finger in and she'd go, don't let the bastards get you down. <laughs> so, <clears throat> sorry. So it's hard to believe mum's not here anymore. 
as a legacy lives on in many ways in our family. But nonetheless, it is it's time to say goodbye. So rest in peace, Mum. We love you and you'll be sorely missed. Now we shall have the first reading. Liam Clark. The first reading is from the prophet Isaiah. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Should you pass through the sea, I will be with you. Or through rivers, they shall not swallow you up. For Yahweh consoles his people and takes pity on those who are afflicted. I have carried you on the palm of my hand. For you are precious in my eyes and honoured, and I love you. The word of the Lord. The response is, I hope in the Lord, I trust in his word. I hope in the Lord. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleading. Response, I hope, I hope in the Lord, 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 I trust, I trust in his Lord. word. If you, O Lord, shall mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? But with you is found forgiveness. For this we revere you. Response, I hope in the Lord, I trust in his word. My soul is waiting for the Lord. I count on his word. My soul is longing for the Lord more than watchmen for daybreak. Response, I hope in the Lord. I trust in his word. Because with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Israel indeed he will redeem for all, for all its iniquity. Response, I hope in the Lord, I trust in his word. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Love is patient and love is kind. It is never jealous. Love is never boastful or conceited. It is never rude or selfish. It does not take offense and it is not resentful. Love takes no pleasure in other people's sins but delights in the truth. It is always ready to excuse, to trust, to hope, and to endure whatever comes. Love does not come to an end, but if there are gifts of prophecy, the time will come where they must fail, or the gifts of languages, it will not continue forever. And knowledge for this too, the time will come where it must fail. In short, there are three things at last, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill. There he sat down and was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak. This is what he taught them. How happy are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy the gentle. They shall have the earth for their heritage. Happy those who mourn. They shall be comforted. Happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right. They shall be satisfied. Happy the merciful, they shall have mercy shown them. Happy the pure in heart, they shall see God. Happy the peacemakers, they shall be called children of God. Happy those who are persecuted in the cause of the right, this is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calamity against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Kindly be seated. My dear friends, it's my honor and privilege to celebrate the required mass for our departed member of our community, Patricia, with the friends and the family on behalf of St. John the Baptist Parish community. And I extend my heartfelt condolence to the members of Patricia. Well, dear friends, for us, death is not an end. It's only a means to an end. The psalmist says, the lifespan is only 70 years and 80 for those who are strong. So we have honored, we have come here to celebrate the life of Patricia because God has been gracious to her all these years of her earthly journey. As she completed the earthly journey, she has been called back to the Heavenly Father, one with the angels and saints. And the Shakespeare writes one of his book where he says that we all come into this world as a players or to perform certain characters on the stage. Some play a major role, some play a minor role. So we do not have answer they play their role, why they are major, why they are minor. Because on the stage, all cannot be a major character, all cannot be a minor characters. So that's how we find in the world, people die at different stages. Some brings us sadness, some find it difficult to accept. So, today we thank God for all the blessings that she received on, his, uh, on her earthly life because she played a major role, major character on the stage as a mother, grandmother, grand grandmother, wife, auntie, various roles she played. And we grew, as members of the family and our friends grew with her and 
experience the love in and through our words, deeds, and actions. So we are basically gathered here to thank God for the wonderful person as he was. And I come to pray that the Lord may welcome mine to his paradise, one with the angels and saints. Well, dear friends, on behalf of the parish community of St. John the Baptist, and I thank God for all that she had done to the community, a person of selflessness. And today's all the readings were well chosen, you know. Blessed are those who are merciful. For moon, for this is the kingdom of God. The blessedness that she received because she reached out to the people with whom she worked. Selfless service, irrespective of, without any reward. That what being the volunteer and continuously doing years together, building the community, it is not the rewarding job, you know, but yet she persisted for years together to build the community. The selfless service that she rendered to the community of St. John the Baptist Church at Voi Voi. Well, dear friends, as we come to say farewell to our sister, let us thank God and continue to pray that the Lord may welcome her into his paradise, one with the angels and saints. Kindly stand, we shall have the prayer of the faithful. It is from God that we come when we enter this life. And it is to him we go when we leave it. Comforted by this faith, let us pray with confidence for Patricia, for ourselves and for others. Our response will be, Lord, Hear our prayer. Can you repeat? Lord, hear our prayer. Say loudly. No, you speak. Just speak loudly. We thank Lord for Shani's life, her smiling face, the way she made us laugh, and and her the care and generosity she shared with us all. Her loving nature will always stay in our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who mourn Shani, especially Pa, and her children, Stephen, Caroline, and Peter. We pray that their grief may be lightened by Christ's promise to unite them again in his heavenly home. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We thank God for Shani's gifts and talents and for those whose lives she touched. Our lives have been made better for knowing her and the world a better place for her influence. Lord, hear us. We pray for the wonderful staff at Gosford Hospital who cared for Shani during her many visits to hospital this year. May their continued work be forever blessed by God. Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray for the family and friends who have departed this life. We pray especially for Libby and know that she is now with Shani and the angels in heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And that it will be the same for all who have died in Jesus. We make these petitions and comfort one another through Christ our Lord.
May the road rise to meet you And the wind be at your back And the Lord uphold you always In the hollow of his hand In the hollow of his hand for your goodness be off for this bread, fruit of the earth, Lord, for your bread, be and become our bread of life. Hope Blessed be, be yours, love be yours, peace be yours, joy be yours, strength be yours. God bless you. May He keep you forever in His hand. May the road rise to meet you and the wind be at your back and the Lord upon you always in the hollow of his hand in the hollow of his hand it be yours, hope be yours, love be yours, peace be yours, joy be yours, strength be yours. May God bless you. May he keep you forever in his hand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Lord, receive the gifts we offer for the salvation of Patricia. May Christ be merciful in judging our sister, for she believed in Christ as her Savior. And our God, we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For he is the salvation of the world the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him the host of angels adore your, adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May voices we pray join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim... Blessed is he who comes. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts. We pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At that time, he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, "Take this, all of you, and." Sorry. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, "Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me." the mystery of faith we proclaim your death o lord and profess your resurrection until you come again therefore as we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks the held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope and antony our bishop and all the clergy religious and entire people remember your servant patricia whom you have called from this world to yourself grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever the savior's command and found by divine teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of God's love and peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Body and blood of Christ being made in eternal life. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ, 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 Body of Christ. I will come to you in the silence. I will lift you up all your fears. You will hear my voice. I claim you as my choice. Be still and know I am here. I am hope for all who are hopeless. I am eyes for all who long to see. In the shadow of the night, I will be your light. Come and rest in me. Body of Christ. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, and I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. 
hearing, healing for the one who dwell in shame. All the blind will see, the lame will all run free, and all will know my name. I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, and I will bring you home. I love you. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings. Be on the breath of dawn. Make you to shine like the sun. And hold you in the palm of his hand. The snare of the fowler will never capture you, and famine will bring you no fear. Under his wings your refuge, his faithfulness your shield. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings. Be on the breath of life. Make you to shine like the sun. And hold you in the palm of his hand. And hold you, hold you 
Patricia's live photo story.
sin and so receive the everlasting joy of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Now we shall have the final commentation. God in his wisdom knows the span of our days. He has chosen to call to himself Patricia, whom he adopted as his own in baptism. The body we must now bury will know one day will rise again to a new and radiant life. That will never end. Our firm belief is that Patricia, because she was baptized, has already entered this new life. Our firm hope is that we shall do the same. Let us ask God to comfort our family and friends, to increase our desire for the joys of heaven. <laughs> of angels come to greet you. May they speed you to paradise. May the Lord enfold you in his mercy. May you find eternal life. The Lord is my Let us pray. Into your hands, Father of mercy, we commend our sister Patricia, the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Patricia in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith. Until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever, we ask this through Christ our Lord. In peace, let us take our sister Patricia to our place of rest. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace.
you shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I will give you rest. If you pass through raging waters, in the sea you shall not drown. If you walk amidst the burning flames, you shall not be harmed. If you stand before the power of hell and death is at your side, know that I am with you through it all. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I will give you Thank you. 